my lab, and around you are my students. And what we do is try to make robots walk. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Who's seen robots before? My videos on YouTube and everything, right? Okay. Real ones in person? Anybody? Some people? All right. So, toy ones? That's kind of a toy there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give a relatively short talk because you probably don't want to hear me speak too much because I've been accused of being boring. <laughs> but uh, what I really want to do is have you guys see the actual robots working. So we're going to go around and we have now here, we have Amber 1.0 we call it there. And in the other room next door is Amber 2.0. So, but to begin with, let's talk a little bit about what robots are. So has anyone seen the, wow, we, Probably. Maybe, do you have one of the lights? There we go. So has anybody seen this robot before? Asmo, right? Like this, some people? Okay, so this is a humanoid robot that was developed by Honda, and it, it cost, we don't have to turn them all, I think. Um, so it cost something like $500 million to develop over the uh, 20 year period. So it's very, robots are very expensive, all right? But the idea of, of Honda and in general is try to get robots that can do what humans do, right? And this is very compelling, but it's also very hard, okay? Um, there's been a lot of work done, and I'm not going to talk about all of it. That's just a commercial, by the way. But here's kind of the state of the art in what's happening right now with robots. These are a little bit scarier, right? <laughs> Who's seen this one before? It went viral on YouTube, all right? If I'm using the terms correctly. Uh, <laughs> So basically, this is a robot that was built by a company called Boston Dynamics. And again, it's, it's an attempt to mimic how humans work. And that's really the goal of what we do in this lab, is try to get robots that can walk like humans. And that seems like a, does that seem like an easy thing or a hard thing? That's, it's, yeah, it's, thank you for saying that, because it's really hard. <laughs> um, it's really, really hard. Um, and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail, but to kind of show you why it's so hard, Here's an example of what can go wrong. So this is this ASMO. It's kind of a low-res video. And this is, again, the $500 million robot that has had countless engineers work on it, countless scientists. And it's in a demonstration in an audience in front of a bunch of people when you don't want anything to go wrong, right? So it walks over to the stairs. And it goes to go up the stairs. And who knows what's going to happen here? It's going to fall. Eventually, when it finally gets there, so while you're walking, you're watching this walking, does this look human-like? Yes. It's very stiff. So I'm going to talk about that in one second, why it's so stiff. But here comes the fun part. Slowly, very slowly. Oh, it makes a couple steps. It's all the anticipation, right? It's building on it. Here it goes. <laughs> and then, and then here, here would be, here would be my role. If this was my role, the guy running out, like freaking out. Oh my God, I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> oh, and then they go back. It's okay. Don't look back here. Everything's fine. Yeah. So, and they just keep going. So, so the question is, what looked funny about that walking and how do we make it better? So it turns out walking is actually, as I say here, it's often called controlled falling. Because while you're walking, if you stop or freeze mid-step, you will fall over. If you try this, if you're actually walking and you stop, you're, you're done, right? As opposed to standing, I can stand on one leg and be frozen, okay? So that's the difference. And so what this robot does is, is basically keep its center mass the mass of its body centered at a point over its feet, okay? So when it walks, try walking so that you're always over your foot. You get this very stiff look, right? Now what humans do again is something very different. They do things where they, they lift their toe, their heel in the air, they strike down here. So they do some very dynamic behavior. And so the question and what we're really looking at in this lab and hopefully you'll see it represented on some of the robots is, how do we look to humans and human walking to try to capture that behavior? And so this is the science of it, right? This is how do we understand how humans walk. And the idea here is, ignore all the dorky plots, but the idea here is we want to somehow take human walking and discover the important information in that walking and realize that walking on robots. 
Again, how does that sound? Easy or hard? Hard. It's pretty hard, okay? Because we can't do something like look at a human walking and just take that data and put it on the robot. Why? That is all those Exactly. The mechanics are different, fundamentally, of the robot and the human. So you can't just do that. So what you need to do is try to find patterns. So the idea here is if you look at humans, it's a very complex system. Uh, but <coughs> fundamentally, walking occurs at a very low level. So for example, where do people think walking comes from? Our algorithms to make us ourselves walk. Where do you think it comes from? The what? Your legs. Actually, that's not too far off. Who thinks it's the brain by itself? Your brain makes you, it makes you walk. It's a combination of things. And actually, a lot of it resides in the spinal cord. Your spinal cord, think about the brain as being a computer, like your desktop computer. Okay? Your spinal cord is kind of like your cell phone. Right? It has some computational power, but it's not as powerful as your desktop. And then your skin and your muscles, everything down here is kind of like, I don't know, give me something smaller than a cell phone. Keyboard. <laughs> kind of. A little bit of process. Yeah, it's kind of like a keyboard. Yeah. Even an SD card. Yeah, those kind of peripherals to your computer, right? Because what they do is they give feedback to the system that feeds into your cell phone and your desktop computer. And it's all connected on the cloud, right? Cloud computing. So the idea is to try to capture that. So what we do is what's often done is we start by studying human motion. And when you study human motion and you put it in a computer, this is about what it looks like. Right? So this is the data from actually me walking. This is me right here. It captured in a computer. Okay? But that's still not enough. We have to do more to it. This is what that looks like. This is what my walking data looks like. It's very messy, right? And we have to somehow take this data and make it better and make it in a way that we can actually put it on a robot. So this is a very brief description of how we do this. So the idea again is we're gonna start with human walking and translate all the way to a robot. So here's me walking at, at Berkeley and just doing a couple runs. This is how boring it starts. Just looking at the basic simple behavior. And that's the representation of my walking in the computer, right? It's cool, and then now we're actually analyzing it a little bit more. And in the end, what we're going to do is take all the stuff that we analyze and create algorithms that give us this. So this is a robot walking using my data. And it's in stick figures because they're all computer generated, right? This isn't meant to be flashy. It's not meant for movies. It's meant to be physically correct in a way that we can realize on a robot. Okay? So let's talk about this a little bit. How do we apply these methods? And how do we take this understanding of human walking that we have and put it on physical robots? So I'm going to start at the simplest level. Now come the really fun things, actually. The simplest level is this guy. Okay, this is called a passive robot. And what's special about this? It has no, it has no what? Body. It's all metal. What is it really lacking? Knees, joints, what else? Power. Who said power? Somebody say power, or did I just make that out of nowhere? <laughs> Everybody shake your head. You said power, right? Yeah. yeah, power. There's no motors, right? There's no motors. So how would this work? It turns out that there's something intrinsic to our mechanical structure that allows us to walk. Right? So it's hard, kind of hard because you need a slope to give it a little bit of energy. But after you run this, it can take a couple steps, right? And I'm not doing anything there. It's purely passive. It's walking backwards now. Yep. They are slightly curved. Why are they slightly curved? So it can like roll back. It can rock. So that the foot won't hit the ground. Okay? So here's what it can do in a context better than my lab. Um, so by the way, this was built by undergraduate students. Yep. <laughs> this was built by undergraduate students. So this is what you can do in college, even at the level of college, right? Is, is it can do these very natural things, right? They got A's, by the way. Uh, and it looks surprisingly human-like, considering there aren't knees, there's not motors, there's no body, right? It looks like it's swinging a little bit and everything, right? It's happy. So, happy? It's happy. It's happy, yes, it's happy. So, actually, good walking often looks happy. It's very strange, it's true, though. A lot of hip swing. And this is it actually walking right outside, down the street, right here out front, and it just kind of keeps going. It went 145 feet, I think, on its own without any power. So, and the funny part is he's actually sitting here with a broom, sweeping. 
So this is going to be a new Olympic event that I'm going to start. You know, robotic sweeping. Um, why is he doing that? To keep it clear, right? To reduce basically friction and pebbles and everything else. All right, so now let's talk about adding motors. Once we take this understanding, we add motors to the system. And this is that robot right there. Looks kind of plain just sitting there, right? Okay, but let's see what we can do with it through these methods. So this is, oh no, that's, no, sorry, it's this robot. I totally got it wrong. This robot right here, I, I mixed my order up. So that's a cute little robot walking, right? It's cute. But is this human-like? Who thinks this is human-like? It's not. It's not. And it's, it's not for a lot of reasons. Partially because that looks nothing like a human, right? And actually, its feet are bigger than its, its calves. Imagine walking with feet that were longer than your calves. It'd be kind of hard to do it right, right? So let's, let's go to something that's better. Now it's this robot. This is the one that we, so we built this in-house. So undergraduates and graduate students built this robot. And this is what it has. So I'll let this whole one play, because I like this one a lot. Um, so actually, all these people listed are in the lab today. So, except for one who graduated. Um, so this is our robot walking on a treadmill. Not treadmill. The tread desk. The tread desk, yes, the tread desk. So we'll wait a minute until I ask you whether it's human-like or not. But here what we did is we slowed down the treadmill, slower than it thought it was. And it starts walking slower, right? It's like being very cautious, okay? So the idea is if you can discover the fundamental ways that human walks, that humans walk, you can actually get emergent behavior on robots. What does that mean, emergent behavior? So then it does something that, like a human, if you pushed it, it would catch itself, right? So this is emergent behavior. So what's happening here? We're getting something that we didn't plan for. Something new is being created even though we didn't plan for this type of behavior and it catches itself, right? So let's, uh, let's look at it actually walking next. So actually what happened here is a funny story. I was, it was actually during Christmas break and my students were still here and they got this working when I was gone at, on a trip for a conference and they decided they wanted to do whatever it took to, took to break it. <laughs> and they didn't tell me about this till after they broke it. And, and, and it's okay with me because they have to fix it, so it doesn't bother me. So they did things like this, hit it with the board. And you see it walking, and it, it sort of reacts like in a very natural fashion. Right? So I'll let you guys maybe touch the robot a little bit. Be gentle, though. They do break easy. Um, just like you saw with the other one. Amber. So Amber is the name of our lab. It's A&M Bipedal Experimental Robotics. Okay. It's a girl's name. Yeah, and it's a girl's name. Look at that. So now it actually walks over disturbances. So first of all, does this look human-like? Slightly better, right? Better than that one for sure. So we're doing better, and the strange thing is we're doing better even though it doesn't have actual feet. So that tells you feet are important but not essential to getting interesting walking behaviors, like going over obstacles. <laughs> Actually, you'll see next door, our next robot has feet. So Amber 2.0 is next door and it has feet. It's not walking yet, unfortunately. We just put it together. And then they put a bunch of stuff. And it can't do it. <laughs> All right? So, um, and actually you can, see it, you can see it breaking right here. First of all, it does the splits, because it misses the treadmill. Yeah, it must have hurt a little bit, right? And actually, you, can, you probably can't see it because it's kind of dark, but this is when the knee blows. Right there, oh. explodes. So it had, it had an ACL tear. So the question is, where else can we go? And I'm going to show you one more robot. This is actually from somebody I work with in Michigan, Jesse Grizzle. And these are all real names. And uh, this is actually going to be a robot running. So that that actually, who thinks that's human-like? It looks pretty good, right? So we're getting closer to understanding how to make robots do what we do. So what does the future hold? So this is just trying to get you pumped because I think when you guys go to college in ten years, 
Robots are going to be in a totally different four years, whatever in many years. Four years. All right, four years, you'll be, you'll be in a different world, possibly. So actually, something that's going to happen in two and a half years is the DARPA Robotics Challenge. And, the, and what they're going to actually do is, and I'm actually part of a team for this, is they're going to build robots like this, out of science fiction. And they're going to try to send these robots into disaster scenarios to fix things when humans can't go in. Okay, so this is going to be very exciting. And another thing that I think should be on the horizon, and you should, you know, write letters to Obama about this and tell him he needs to put more funding in NASA, because uh, no way, because no like this, this is uh, this is actually a Robonaut developed at NASA in space. This is a torso on the International Space Station moving, right? That looks real. It is real. <laughs> It's a real robot in space right this moment. Who knew that this robot was in space? Some people? Yeah. It's very cool. This robot is up there circling the Earth right now doing things. Exactly. And so, and where are we going with all this? So, imagine something like this now. Imagine we can take a robot and we can send it to the moon. And not only that, that we'll be able to do things like walk around or to Mars. Like Star Wars, right? Instead of little wheel vehicles, we, we want to send things like this. I'll just go forward to the... The part I care about is the walking part. No, not that part. There. I didn't make this walking, so don't, don't judge me if you don't like it. Um, but I don't know what it's doing there. <laughs> Scoop and dirt. There you go. All right, so this is where I think robots are going. They're going to... I think at some point, and hopefully in the near future, they're going to be everywhere. But the only way we can put them everywhere is if we make them do what people can do.